how far can a cocktail transport you? For me, one of the most evocative cocktails is a caipirinha, because when I was around 20 or so, I traveled in South America and drank more than I probably care to or can remember. But don't worry if you don't have a bottle of cachaca to hand, um, we are gonna do a little vodka version at the end, so stay tuned. The caipirinha is Brazil's national drink, but it's conquered the world. Nobody's entirely sure when it was invented, but it seems like it was during the 19th century, probably as a more medicinal drink using honey and apparently garlic, which I can't quite picture. Uh, now the name comes from the word caipras, sorry for my Portuguese accent, which means kind of a rural community um, or like country folk, I suppose. And then inha being like a little cute um, suffix to mean little. Uh, and it's really heroing cachaça, which is Brazil's national spirit. Uh, it's made from sugarcane, obviously a big sugarcane industry there, but the big difference between that and kind of uh, other rums is that it's made with sugarcane juice. It's most similar to a rum agricole, although unlike agricole, it can be distilled on pot stills, which can make it a little bit richer and funkier. That said, most commercial cachaças are distilled on column stills as well, so they're quite fresh and gla uh, grassy and floral. Um, and then they can use some really fun indigenous woods to age them. Um, so if you have tried any uh, interesting artisanal uh, cachaças or any aged ones, please let me know in the comments below. I haven't honestly been able to try them that much myself. And then the other kind of big hero of this drink is the lime. Um, so traditionally they are muddled, uh, so you really wanna get all that kind of aromatic oil out of the lime skin as well as just the juice in there. Uh, for me, I do do it slightly differently. So um, what I'm gonna do is actually juice the lime, keep uh, some of the lime juice separate, muddle this with some sugar um, to kind of get it going. Then we'll add some lime juice to help dissolve. Uh, so let's get started. So the reason that I do it this way is it just gives me a little bit more control over the actual sourness or balance of the end cocktail. Uh, so it's kind of usually one to one and a half limes, but obviously depends on the lime and also your own palate. I'll just keep this one off to the side and I'll just cut up those little lime husks more into uh, little wedges and pop them in the tin. So usually half a lime is fine for that um, in terms of you know not wanting the whole glass to be to be filled with the husks. Then we're gonna go in with your sugar. So you want like a granulated sugar. Um, the idea being that muddling that up against the lime is gonna kind of help get that all moving and get the nice oils coming out. Uh, so I'm just gonna do like a couple of bar spoons. I'm using um, a brown sugar just for that little extra depth of flavor. And you don't want anything too chunky because um, obviously, you know, it's not all going to dissolve um, just with shaking it up. Uh, but I feel like this is a nice rustic drink anyway. Um, definitely the ones that I had in Brazil had uh, plenty of crunch to them. So don't be too concerned about making sure that everything's entirely dissolved. It's a good squelch sound there. Then I'm gonna go in with 60 mils of cachaça. I'm using Sagatiba, just a good quality sort of workhorse one. And then I'm gonna take that lime juice and I'm gonna measure out 30 mils. Then I've got a little bit of the lime juice left uh, if I taste it and feel like it's a little bit too sweet. But for this one, if anything, I think it's a little bit tart, so I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more sugar. Just about half another teaspoon. And this one's obviously super flexible in terms of how you actually like to drink things. You can make it more sour, more sweet, depending on your own taste. Then I'm just gonna give this a quick shake. Uh, again, traditionally, it is often just built in the glass. Um, the only reason that I do it this way is actually because we have quite big like hoshizaki ice, sort of, uh, I guess, proper bar ice. And generally the way that this would be served in Brazil is on more like a pebble ice or something just a little bit um, smaller. So I'm really just gonna shake it like long enough to just try and break up these cubes a little bit. If you're using, um, I guess, like a, just ice out of your um, freezer or something like that, then you're probably fine just to build it straight in the glass. It's all pretty nice and kind of however you wanna do it, this one. We're just getting it moving. I can't help but feel that maybe the ones that I had in Brazil had a little bit more cachaça in there than this one does, but uh, still very tasty. Mm -hmm. 
Then we're just gonna shake and dump for this guy. And I like to push these wedges properly in. Got another little one in there. So you'll get some nice little chewy bits of lime flesh as you drink through the drink as well. And then to finish off, you obviously don't have to do this, but you know, we're on YouTube, so let's be fancy, a little dehydrated lime wheel. So there we have our Caipirinha. See, I love, and that's why I do tend to make it a little bit uh, sweeter to begin with, because I love that you get those little bits of the actual lime flesh through there that you can kind of chew on and get a little pop of sourness. But really fresh and herbal. I mean, I do just really love cachaca and rum agricole and all that kind of style of thing as something to use in cocktails because it has heaps of body, um, super aromatic, really lifted, but also doesn't overpower. So, you know, the lime is really bright and really front stage here too. Um, so if you are a citrusy kind of person, uh, this is definitely one that you should try if you haven't already. The caipirinha. So now you know. Now, not everyone is always going to have a bottle of cachaca to hand, but fear not, this template can easily be adjusted to other spirits. I mean, it's pretty classic just with your sugar, spirit and lime. Obviously white rum would work, um, but one of the most popular is the Caprioska, which is made with vodka, hence the little Russian twist to the name there. Uh, I'm actually going to go with an Aussie vodka, but really kind of anything that you have will work. Given that vodka is a lighter flavoured spirit in general, um, I do tend to make this just a little bit differently and I don't go um, and do the full muddling. I just put the uh, lime wedges in the shaker still to release some of their oils, um, but kind of not as intensely as in the caipirinha where you've given, given it a good going over um, so that it doesn't overpower the whole thing. And then I just use sugar syrup. So generally just kind of like a bit of a cleaner, crisper cocktail. You can absolutely do it the traditional way as well. I just thought I'd give you a couple of options. Um, and I do tend to find that when someone orders a Caprioska, it's the first of many. Uh, so this keeps it a little bit more clean and easy, being perfectly honest for me behind the bar. So I'm just gonna squeeze my limes again. Try if you can to find some nice juicy limes with sort of a thinner skin. Uh, these ones are actually a little bit less juicy than the ones I've been using. The last one was pretty much exactly 30 mils. I didn't get much extra, so we'll see what this one gives me. Then we're just gonna pop in our lime wedges and go for some sugar syrup. So um, I just start with 15 mils. You can bump it up a little bit depending on the sourness of your lime. 30 mils of lime. Here we go, that one was a little bit juicier and 60 mils of vodka. So this one's actually a little rye based vodka, um, just made locally, so I like it gives a, a little bit of spice to the situation. Then I'm gonna give it a shake up. This is definitely one, like both of these drinks are ones that you wanna taste before you pour out. Yeah, because it can vary so much depending on the lime that you're using. Make sure I get all the liquid in the glass before we top it up too much. And then my lime wedges aren't wanting to come out, so we'll paste these in here. And a little lime wheel to garnish if you're feeling fancy, but obviously you've already got that pop of colour from the wedges anyway, so if you're not feeling fancy, don't worry about it. Caprioska. Also delicious, yeah, again, just like a little bit kind of cleaner. Um, quite like just very linear, very lime focused. If you're somebody who, you know, used to eat lemons as a kid or something like that, then this is gonna be definitely right up your alley if you like to challenge your palate a little bit. I always actually have a lot of respect for people that can drink lots of them because I would need to be getting on the, on the quickies or whatever you call it in America, <laughs> a little heartburn. But very delicious, super refreshing. I mean, I just wish the weather was a little bit nicer today and we would sit out in the balcony and just uh, have a couple of these, I reckon. Sometimes the simple drinks really are the best and these two really easy three ingredient cocktails just prove it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go and pretend I'm lying on the beach in Rio instead of being in rainy Melbourne because that's what cocktails are about. Escapism. The Caipirinha and the Caprioska. So now you know.